Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. Breaking news for you, President Donald Trump is getting ready to hold a news conference about the rapidly spreading coronavirus. The president is insisting the U.S. is in great shape in its handling of the disease, but public health officials are warning that the coronavirus is far from being contained, and virus fears have sent the stock market into a spiral. We'll go live to his news conference as soon as he's ready. More breaking news for you. Police in Milwaukee say they have multiple casualties after an active shooter situation this afternoon. Here's a live look. According to a police source, one suspect is down with multiple casualties. That suspect is a former employee. Police are searching for other potential suspects. The Molson Coors complex is on lockdown. Employees were notified by text message and email about the incident. A large multi-block perimeter was being set up in the area. Stick with Valley News Live as we continue to follow this story. The Fargo Police Narcotics Bureau says a tip led them to a big drug bust in the metro. Officials say they received information about people selling marijuana and ecstasy in the 1800 block of 39th Street South in Fargo. Police used a canine and it detected the odor of narcotics on a garage at the apartment. Authorities got a search warrant for that apartment and then seized nearly $3,000 in cash, along with marijuana, ecstasy, and hallucinogenic mushrooms. Police also arrested 24-year-old Kaylee Helgeson, who is now facing multiple charges. It's quiet, but we won't be able to shake the cold just yet. Let's find out when that will happen with Hutch in your No Wait Weather Planner. Hutch? Some flurries accumulated across the valley as we began our day as well. Those long gone, some blue skies as we head into the evening hours as snow chances are both to the east and west of us for now. Some light snow showers in the central Dakotas. The evening looks pretty quiet. Temperatures right now are in the teens and not far from the single digits in northeast North Dakota. Your planner in Fargo shows lower teens for most of the evening. The wind, as promised yesterday, very light throughout our evening. So you take a look at Grand Forks. We'll be down in those lower single digits as we head to bed tonight. It does look like there's another chance of a few flakes, Andrea. I'll have details on that, and we'll look ahead towards some much milder weather here in just a couple of minutes. All right, thanks, Hutch. I don't know where they're justifying all this money for a, a lot. The owners of some local mobile home parks are making news again. We first told you about Haven Park Capital last year and how they have a history of raising their rent on their properties. Well, this time, Haven Park is charging some new fees and giving their residents little time to come up with the money. They reached out to our whistleblower hotline, those residents, telling Valley News Team's Joshua Pagero what's going on. Scott Lanning says he moved to Corside Mobile Home Park in Fargo because that's all he could afford with his disability check. I've already canceled two hip surgeries like I, guys, I told you, and they put me in the hospital with a, a nervous breakdown. I mean, what are these guys trying to do? Residents here got a notice Tuesday night that Corside was adding a $45 utility and a $9 trash fee, which had been included in the rent before. On my screen door yesterday, a bill. Lanning says it was a punch in the gut. They're really hurting, hurting me. They're, it's more of a push out is what they're doing. They're trying to push us all out. Haven Park Capital, a company based in Utah, manages Courtside and two others in the metro, Brookside Mobile Home Park and Riviera Heights. Since taking over, Haven Park has raised the rent, increasing it by 45 bucks this past October. I can't afford to live in any apartment or anything anymore. They're pretty much putting me to the street. With these two new fees, Lanning has now seen an increase of nearly $100 in less than six months. Most of the residents that we spoke to say the $54 that was added to their rent was a surprise, and some are already living on a fixed income that this will stretch them even further. The elderly folks that are here can't afford to pay that much money. Juan Hernandez says he can handle the increase, but worries about those who barely have enough to live on as it is. They just need to be given a fair chance. You know, in $45, it's way too much for an individual, for one individual household. Hernandez says he now fears backlash from management for speaking up, but believes it's the right thing to do. In Fargo, Joshua Piguero, Valley News Live. Haven Park had planned to impose those new fees on March 1st, but after our phone call, the company pushed it back to April 1st. If you need help with an issue in your community, call our whistleblower hotline, 237-6576, and leave your tip. 
A member of our investigative team will get on the case and go to work to expose the truth. Two sex offenders will soon be moving to the same block in Bemidji, Minnesota. Authorities say 43-year-old Gerald Brown Eagle and 34-year-old Michael Smith will soon be living in the 1300 block of Beltrami Avenue Northwest. Both currently live in Bemidji but are expected to move within the city on Friday. Both are high-risk sex offenders who have been convicted of raping children. A man is in jail after crashing into multiple cars and leading police on a chase in the metro. 18-year-old Abdi Fata Jama of Moorhead is sitting in jail for DUI, reckless endangerment and fleeing police. Authorities say it started this morning just after 8 near the tri-level of I-94 and I-29. When police tried to pull Jama over, he took off going 83 miles an hour. Authorities say he then crashed into a vehicle near 25th Street and hit a pickup near 8th Street in Moorhead. That resulted in a chain reaction crash where three other vehicles were then hit. A man is facing DUI charges after a head-on crash while driving the wrong way on the interstate. Take a look. You'll see the car cruising down the wrong way of the interstate before crashing into another vehicle. It happened along I-29 near Manville around 9.30 last night. The people involved were taken to a hospital. None of the injuries are considered critical. The driver, 34-year-old Adam Bergman of Alvarado, Minnesota, is now facing DUI charges and is in the Grand Forks County Jail. The 2020 Democratic presidential candidates are back on the campaign trail in South Carolina after a fiery debate co-hosted by CBS News. Just days ahead of the state's primary, former Vice President Joe Biden earned a key endorsement that could help tip the scales in his favor. Michael George reports from New York. Hours after bashing each other on the debate stage, six Democratic candidates appeared at the National Action Network prayer breakfast in South Carolina. I'm ready to go toe-to-toe with this president. It is a moral imperative that we defeat the most dangerous president in the modern history of this country. The candidates are crisscrossing the state fighting for every last vote before Saturday's primary. This Saturday, it is up to you. Get in this fight. I'm asking for your vote. We know we have to win in the middle of the country. We know we have to win in states like yours. A key to victory in South Carolina is winning over black voters who make up around 60% of the Democratic electorate in the state. Today, people are talking about a revolution. What the country's looking for are results. Today, former Vice President Joe Biden scored a key endorsement from Representative James Clyburn, the highest ranking African American in Congress. I know Joe. We know Joe. But most importantly, Joe knows us. Biden maintains a narrow lead in South Carolina over national frontrunner Bernie Sanders, who took plenty of heat from his opponents at the debate. Bernie and I agree on a lot of things. But I think I would make a better president than Bernie. I like Bernie. We came in together to the Senate. But I do not think that this is the best person to lead the ticket. One person who won't be on the ballot in South Carolina, former New York City Mayor Mike Bloomberg. But he will be next week on Super Tuesday when 14 more states hold their contests. Michael George, CBS News. Today, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi indicated she would be comfortable with Bernie Sanders as a potential Democratic nominee. Defense Secretary Mark Esper says next year's defense budget falls short of the Pentagon's needs. Appearing before the House Armed Services Committee, Esper says the $705 billion budget for next year is only slightly more than the current budget. Esper says the essentially flat top line in the Pentagon budget will lead to tough funding choices, including the allocation of nearly $4 billion for a southern border wall. The department's total FY21 budget request is $705.4 billion. This represents a minor increase from the FY20 enacted amount of $704.6 billion, but does not keep pace with inflation. Given this flattened funding level, we were required to make many tough decisions to ensure our highest priorities were adequately funded. Esper also stated that the president has determined that we have a national emergency on our southwest border. And in order to deal with that emergency, the U.S. needs a barrier system. And don't forget, you can make a difference by donating your airline, uh, air miles rather, to our Wishes in Flight campaign this Thursday. We'll have a story tonight on Valley News Live at 6 and more stories throughout the week.